great. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by emailing Steve McCarthy at McCarthyS at AmherstMA.gov. That's M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y-S at AmherstMA.gov. No in-person attendance of members of the public will, will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time by a technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the town website an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. All right. And so let's call the meeting to order at 5.02 p.m. Um, take a roll call of attendance. Hallie? Here. Gaston? Here. Doug? Here. And I am here and Dylan is not. So we are four present and one absent. Um, okay, public comment. Is there anyone here for public comment? And I am seeing nobody. No, there are no attendees. So, okay. <laughs> so, oh, we're gonna go right into discussion items. So Steve, you said, we talked about this, that there are some temporaries in the works, but not now, this week, right? Yes, I got a big batch of UMass ones, um, and uh, they are all a couple months out. So I'm going to try to review them and get them all on one agenda as a batch. Um, and then we have one for the Hitchcock Center in mid-October, and um, they had to make some changes to fit within the regulations. So I'm waiting to um, get some uh, amended materials from them. Okay, but we should Super. be doing that probably the next meeting, I think. Great. So we have that to look forward to. Um, okay. So discussion items, um, adult use marijuana regulations. Doug, what is the, the scoop on that? I think that the, the version that you have, um, I went back through it for one last time, fine tooth comb, at, you know, did a small bit of tweaking to some of the things, you know, looking for typos and whatnot. I'm sure there's some still in there. Um, and I think they're sort of, you know, it, barring, uh, you know, things that people might notice and want to add to them, I think they're kind of ready to go. Um, I think the thing is, is we can't really adopt them until we actually have uh, the authority to, <laughs> to right. issue a license. Um, I did put to, together a draft of a of a bylaw just as a starting point for the for the uh, I think it's the GOL is the subcommittee of the council that deals with those kind of things. So hopefully we can kind of get that in front of them, uh, and we can share if, if there are obviously if there are other edits people want to make to this or, or uh, changes they think are necessary or appropriate for it. Uh, we'll we'll put those in, but I think we can hold off on actual adoption until the you know the license gets created by the council if they're willing to. Um, but we could pass this along with that request for that for that authority, so they can see kind of where we're headed with this. Okay, sounds great. Uh, any questions, Gaston? Yeah, no, thanks. I um, I uh, I'm finally kind of getting what what they're doing and 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 appreciate the the work and the, and the clarity um, here, Doug. So. I think I have like my um, process comment is wondering when is the best time to try to drum up some public comment. I, I, I this is the kind of thing that we're like breaking new ground, and I I think it would really be good to get commentary both from um, operators, you know, neighbors customers it, to the extent possible. And so I'm not sure whether that makes sense to try to happen before we send it up or that our recommendation in sending it up is that we encourage the town council to organize that. So that I don't that's a process question. But before um, before we were to adopt these, I uh, and maybe it's after the council empowers us. And then at that point, we have a hearing because you know we, we then have the power to act on it. Um, so I, I'm just raising the question: What's the best time to try to make sure we get some feedback from the community? Yeah, Doug. Um, if I may, um, so that, that that is a great point. I think that I think that um, it is. It's an interesting question because I think that whether to have a license or not is is sort of you know sort of the primary question first and foremost. You know. Um, you know, I'm of the opinion, and that's my sort of personal thing, is that it's it's worthwhile to have this more public process like we do with alcohol, because um, there's not one in the current structure that the state put together. Um, 
And it might be worth a conversation with the with the counselors, whether they be on that uh, on the GOL or otherwise, to see what they think is a good way to do this as far as how to engage. Because I think you're right. Some feedback and some awareness to the broader public is 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 going to be helpful and useful. I will add one other thing. I think, and again, because um, I think one of the the questions that you know, if I'm if I'm an owner of one of these currently existing businesses, I'm like, what's this going to cost me, right? Um, I would suggest, you know, as we think about this, and it fits into our, our fee conversation later, this would be fairly modest in price, you know, hundred bucks or something, fairly modest. And the reason why is because the host community agreement is where we really sort of put the screws to them for for money, um, and, and just to recognize, like, this isn't about, uh, you know, sort of what. You know, our, our liquor licenses are pretty expensive, uh, but we don't have host community agreements. So we're trying to, you know, I impress upon those those license holders the importance of them being good members of our community. In this circumstance, the host community agreement does that. So I think this is more about let's cover the cost of, you know, Steve McCarthy's time and some of that sort of stuff. It's really more about that and 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 uh, and not about you know yet another way to sort of extract some some money out of these people. So. That's just a, a, an additional sort of comment along those lines, but uh, uh, I think maybe asking our our you know sort of liaison to the to the council might be might be the next best step about that. But I think you're right. Public comment on this is important because it, it you know. Okay, so who? Yes, Gaston. Well, I mean, I I have a I have like I mean I think like three specific points or questions. Um, based on the uh, on the draft so if, if this is a good time I can raise one yeah go ahead um so one um you know what I recall is that one of the one of the big points where we can potentially help honor the agreements is on the um really on the affirmative action of the hiring if I you know I think that we've we've covered that and and I so when I was looking I see that in the very last bullet in 8.1, in the sense of you know the mon non-monetary terms, and I, I just wanted to confirm that that that's how you were thinking about it, and whether we should say anything more concrete that doesn't just reference the the agreement. I mean, I wonder if we might um, give a list, a sub list of examples, like including X and Y and Z of of the terms that we know are important. I guess in that vein, it would be really valuable if we could review some of these agreements. I don't know if, if they're public. Yeah, I don't know. Doug, do you know if they- I, I think they almost have to be. Um, okay, yeah. To be honest, so I think it's a matter of, you know, I mean, you have to go and request it from the town manager's office, yeah. um, but we could. I mean, I think that the, I think the template that, um, Jeff Kravitz, before he left, was working on because he was kind of leading that for the for the town. He kind of put a standard format together. He may have shared that standard format with me. I'd have to do a little digging to find that. But I think all of our host community agreements kind of have a similar sort of look and feel to them. Um, but I think you know if if Steve were to you know sort of run upstairs and ask, he could probably get copies to us. But I think they're they're public documents. So okay. Yeah, I, th I think this is, um, sorry, Mary, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 go ahead. I think this is um, getting to be in really great shape, Doug. And um, I mean, I know the first step I'd like to take is just to, uh, you know, review it with um, with Rob and then, um, you know, maybe kind of tweak up the formatting a little bit just to match the format we've been using. Um, and um, cool. yeah, and then probably run it by the uh, the town manager too, because I'm sure this will be a pretty high, high profile um, thing to have happen. Um, and um, you know, one thing to consider. I mean, I think it really depends on what uh, on what he's thinking. But maybe we want to, um, you know, rip up the host community agreements overall and replace them with a license, because um, I know there was some reform with them this year in the legislature. But I uh, kind of wonder how much of a serious court challenge they would ultimately withstand. And it might be worth, um, you know, yeah, future proofing was... ourselves. I, th I think that really depends on what the town manager is thinking. But yeah, I, yeah. Go ahead, Doug. I was going to just say, I think that's, I wouldn't at this moment, because I think there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of things in those host community agreements around security and control and responsibility and that sort of stuff that we would then have to come back and make sure are in sort of uh, 
um, in these regulations, I think, and formalized uh, as part and parcel of that, or they would need to go into the the bylaw of the you know where it creates the license. Uh, and so, you know, I I'd be a little hesitant at the moment. It's like let's set them ride for now, and, and you know the host community agreements. I think sort of keep them in place and and let the you know the sort of uh, case law sort of play out a little bit. <laughs> um, the other thing I will mention, uh, sort of aside to this, is I. I tried in rereading this to to leave ourselves uh, room so that if if uh, public consumption, you know, cafes and stuff become legal, uh, that we don't have to make a lot of alteration to this to sort of have it count. In other words, there's maybe one reference to like for consumption off site kind of thing. We just sort of take that line out, and and I think the rest of it sort of works because it's still a retail setting even if you're in a cafe. So, um, I mean, there may be other things we want to fold in relative to that too. But I think we would have something that would be uh, functional, at least in, in if if it moves quickly in that direction, uh, as well. Just as a side point, but okay. Yeah, Gaston, you had two other points. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, two other um, on eight point two. Um, I think the the third bullet, which is other conditions, the board may reasonably require. That kind of led me to wonder what are the limits on our authority. But in any case, I think. That bullet's not required because it's in the first sentence, I think. So it, it kind of it's like uh, me doth protest too much about, <laughs> <laughs> about how about the leeway. So I, I yeah, I think it's covered in the may impose reasonable conditions. Okay. Um, the uh, the other point is actually um, trying to anticipate a different kind of um, of issue, and that is. I mentioned last time kind of my conversation with my friend who had talked to a <coughs> proprietor for a long time. And I'm seeing that these dispensaries are, are beginning to try to differentiate. They're trying to make their lobbies really pleasant, maybe have magazines, make it a place where people might hang out. And so I suspect that that's gonna invite an expansion of what they're selling. Um, and so, I don't know how to address it expressly, but um, you know, I don't know at what point um, they might start wanting to sell um, uh, things that would require the health department to come in and, and inspect um, or just other retail that's kind of straying from the, um, the, the, the grant. And I guess that might be the kind of thing that we may may be interested in commenting on, but I don't know, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know how to, I, I don't have an answer. I'm just flagging a possible issue that seems germane to the project of, of these, um, of, of this regulation. Yes, Doug. Um, just to kind of get a little more from you on that topic. I mean, are you thinking like, um, uh, are you thinking sort of other retail, you know, like clothing or um, apparatus or all of the above kind of thing? Well, I'm thinking, I mean, I was thinking specifically of like um, starting to sell like coffee and muffins yeah. so that you like hang out. Right. Um, so it would be in, in a way um, kind of backing into social, it wouldn't be consumption yet, but it would be the social. Right. Um, and so that's, I mean, I, that, I don't see a problem with that, but it's, it does seem like the kind of thing that should be, uh, somebody should be aware of like the scope of what's the business. And certainly if it, somebody should be aware to flip the switch and say, oh, it, actually you need a health inspection for what you're now, a different health inspection for what you're now selling. Right. Um, you know, I don't know, to throw a, a, a counterfactual, like, would it matter or would we care if a dispensary started to double as a, you know, a, a, a sex toy store? Is that, does that matter? Is that relevant to the license that we're contemplating? I don't know, you know, I, I, if I may. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so I think that, I think the thing is, is that if, if they get into something else, you know, like food service, then, then of course, then they're gonna get a common pick and, and that stuff. I think that all applies. And that's, okay. you know, that's the same as anybody else that has multiple sort of business, you know, it's like the live entertainment along with your common Vic and your, 
health inspection, you know, those all okay. overlap each other. So I think that's okay. I think to your point though, that other one is like, does that become a question relative to, um, you know, the, and, and, and I think this also plays into the, you know, the, the conversation we'll have a little later about the alcohol regulations, you know, we, we're thinking about sort of what are the criteria to grant a license. So, you know, if people already exist, then, then it's a matter of renewal. But, but I think if we're thinking, of, you know, sort of a brand new one comes in and they want to do X, you know, that's part of the overall consideration, you know, it's like, does it fit within the, you know, the, the, the neighborhood? Is it, I think the phrase in the alcohol one is the, um, does it serve a need and uh, something else? I forget the phrase, but, but, you know, like, do we want to, and I, I think this is to your point, do we want to put some of that language in here as well um, around sort of other factors we're considering when we consider their sort of business plan and their, their totality of stuff that they're doing? Maybe we do, I don't know. Yeah. Because they do um, have things like the, like the, that the, where it's like food that you can eat it, right? Or like a like a piece of not candy on or site, something. But oh no, they, they don't have yeah. them on site. But they could, like they could, like what you're suggesting yeah, yeah. based on, like yeah. there's coffee and muffins, and then there's like, and I know they have the infused drinks, which I think at one point were not allowed in Massachusetts, and now I'm not sure if they've changed that to allow them. But it is sort of like a something that starts out at one thing and then morphs into into something else. I think those well, things so are- like, Let's say- oh. Go ahead, Hallie. Go ahead. So if a liquor store wants to sell chips and Slim Jims, I mean, right. I'm looking at it sort of like that, right? Is that, do they need a special license for that right now? You know, is that sort of akin to what you're suggesting, Gaston, kind of like- A retail, like retail food or something? I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. raising the question so that we yeah. know that it, if it doesn't belong or if it does belong, what do we want to say about it? I mean, just the, the fact that I expect that the, the set of uh, dispensaries we have in town are mm -hmm. going to start morphing and, you know, going in different directions. And that would actually seem to be the kind of space where we could provide some value to the town by paying attention to that. Mm -hmm. Um, but what's the what's what kind of attention and and how does that come up? I'm I'm again I'm I'm raising questions without having answers. <laughs> right, right, right. So, yeah. Do you have so do we have um, just to kind of get off topic? But I know you said maybe we bring this up to the Lee our town council liaison. Do we actually have one anymore? I think it's Mandy Jo. Oh, it is. Okay, that's right. I think she, so. Yeah. Officially, or she just we asked her to come and now she's it. Okay. Yeah, she said it wasn't okay. official. <laughs> okay, great. So would that be the next step? We'd send that off to her or you, Doug, you'd send that along with the, the bylaw language that you've drafted? Yeah, I think, you know, I mean, to, to Gaston's points earlier, I, yeah, I'm happy to put, you know, a bit of a, 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 a sub list into that last bullet on 8.1 to kind of capture some of those, okay. those examples. I'm happy to do that and take that uh, extraneous bullet out. Um, I think that, that the last question is sort of a broader one. We'll have to continue to have that conversation and perhaps, you know, that conversation with the public will be important to that. And then also uh, with the council and that sort of thing. Um, but I think, it, you know, if those changes are amenable to the group, then, then yeah, I can, I'm happy to reach out to Mandy Joe and say, hey, we're, we're kind of here at this point. We're thinking about this. This is a license. Uh, you know, here's sort of the regulations as we've got them at this moment, you know, what do you think's next? What's best for next? You know, that kind of thing and, and kind of peel her out. So if it, you know, that's that's kind of what I would suggest and I'm happy to do that. Okay, yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Guess, did you have guest on? That, that, no, that sounds good to me. I just had a, yeah. actually a specific comment um, on 6-2. Mm -hmm. um, I was just thinking that we've kind of flagged that the renewal function may be where we're especially valuable. Um, like, you know, and, and I'm thinking that to add, submit the reports, the, the board may deem reasonably necessary. Um, so it's, it's we're the ones that deciding what reports we need, you know, like if we need employment reports or details that we, it's just clear that we can keep asking questions and, and asking for more documents. Yeah, I'm happy to add that too. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. Doug, if, if you don't mind, I've always found um, Rob Moore's feedback to be very valuable, these kind of things. So um, I could, you know, I could take these and, um, you know, just try to format them as we have all of our other regulations formatted um, and, you know, maybe just go over with him and provide you with some feedback, um, you know, and we could maybe discuss that at the next meeting and then move on to uh, to the town council. Does that sound? Sounds great. Yeah, that sounds perfect. Oh, is that right, Doug? Yeah. I will, uh, uh, Steve, what I'll do is I'll make the edits that, that Gaston suggested um, and because I, I, I think they're they're valid and, and appropriate. And, and so I'll I'll do those uh, and and then send that to you um, yeah. so that you can I, connect it with, with Rob and sort of see what his feedback is and see if there's something that he may have a whole other little branch of, of thought that we want to add to it, which would be great. Yeah, if I've had a little bit of a, a free time here in between the uh, rental permit renewal and um, the students coming back to start problems that I've been really trying to catch up on uh, license commission things. Um, so I, I took a long look at um, lunch card this this week and um, I'd be happy to do that too. And we can probably get in uh, the guidelines for liquor license regs too and really make some some progress on everything. Good. Yeah, sounds great, thank you. But all right. We've all, been, we've all been working for a long time on these projects. So it'll be oh, nice to, to see them all through. Yeah, really. Um, okay, are we ready for rental registration? So this is, so last time, Kelly, you weren't here, Manny Johanneke was here, and we kind of sprung rental registration on her. And because they are over going through, um, I think she was here for something else. And then, um, so we talked about that for a while. And I think one of the big takeaways is that they're really like she's envisioning that the board of license commissioners will become the author of the regu the new regulations that they are writing the bylaws for. Is that the correct in my what she was hoping for or wanting us to think about kind of going forward? Yeah. That and then the and then being the adjudicator. The adjudicator, right? So if somebody does something wrong, it comes before us like other people have done in the past. Um, so that's something we had to talk about. Um, and um, I think they were gonna, she was gonna go back to the CRC and have further conversations about this and then send us another draft of the bylaw. So, but I haven't gotten anything from her. Does anyone else want anything? No? I mean, I'll just say we had a, like a, a good and yeah discussion of a hard topic, which is like, what are we well suited to do in the domain of, of rental enforcement and we asked that question about what would suspension mean because you don't want to you don't want the penalty to mean that we have less housing in Amherst mm -hmm. and putting people on the street and I, I understood her answer to be well it wouldn't be until the the lease is over is what I understood um, her to be saying something like that right yeah I think right yeah, well, and, yeah. and the thing I would say is that, you know, <clears throat> it, it, as with all things rental related, you know, it's like part of the burden is sometimes, you know, it's part of it, uh, you know, undesirable behavior or whatever is on the tenant and sometimes it's on the landlord. Right. And those are, those are two different tracks and two different mechanisms you want to think about from the standpoint of, of, of uh, penalty, I think, you know, and so that's some of what I think we, you know, everybody's going to struggle with. And and I'm hopeful that the that the council will actually and and you know do a fair amount of the sort of pieces of the thinking around some of that sort of stuff and and you know, if we, if we're asked or tasked with some of the regulation that it's much more nuanced kind of stuff that we're looking for about you know general community well being some of the same questions we ask about you know placement of a uh, liquor license or something like that so they're more of those kind of things and less about some of those you know. Um, Different, you know, uh, structural kind of problems that that I think are better suited to the the council to sort of think about in a political and in, in you know and with the political input that they have because you know we're appointed they're they're elected so their constituents can offer suggestions. I mean they obviously they give us suggestions as well, but but might be better suited certainly in a first first go round to be done through the through the council. But you know. yeah. so that's where that's at. Did she give you any indication of like how many, or maybe Steve knows this, like how many violations, I know we'd be revamping the process, but I'm wondering like what this would do for us in terms of hearings and. I, 
I think we asked it like who's in charge of that now and it turned out there is it the I can't remember all, all I remember is that there was a there's sort of like a on paper there's a, a little board composed of the old select board and the building commissioner and somebody else who theoretically can handle this stuff but they never have yeah, I think it's a great rental appeals nice board way. yeah yeah nice yeah way to enforce the laws I just was curious yeah um I haven't heard anything else from Councillor Haneke since then, but um, I know that uh, in, um, you know, currently the uh, inspection services, we have our inspectors who they will go out and, you know, just, just write people tickets for violations if, if, um, if it comes up um, and um, kind of handle everything administratively that way. Right. And um, if somebody appeals, um, I mean, I, I think there have been a couple of cases where somebody appealed and just went right to court. What if it was something serious? Oh, okay. maybe. Um, but um, there is a rental appeals board that um, theoretically exists. I don't think it's ever met. It was the, uh, the chair of the select board, the chair of the planning board, the chair of the ZBA, and um, maybe there was one more, at least those three. And um, mm -hmm. I don't think it's ever it's ever convened in the eight years since the regulations were passed. So. Hmm. Um, if I may, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, to date, it's largely been complaint driven, which is, which is, I think, it, Steve, you can back me up on this. I think Rob Moore is thinking, well, it would be better to, it's not bad to have that, but to be also proactive and sort of looking for and 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 trying to re remediate problems in a proactive way. So seeking out and doing inspections more actively is one piece of it that I think uh, the, the 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 building inspector would like to have um, a part of this. And I think that I think. Functionally, what's happened is that most of the things that have come up that would have, you know, would qualify are things that are administratively handled within town staff in much the same way, like, you know, police can write tickets or arrest people and, you know, the council doesn't have to be involved in that. Um, so they're sort of empowered to do certain kinds of things. And we may, you know, it may be that the, um, I think that's one of the other sort of pieces policy-wise that that has to be kind of bandied about is is at what level does it transition from, um, you know, sort of uh, more mechanical, straightforward uh, violations of 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 you know of of uh, <clears throat> ordinate you know uh, health and safety kind of things that are that are handled by inspectors and that group of folks, and when does it get into uh, you know a more uh, your border committee kind of level for you know review and and implementation so you know um there, there's some threshold there that that has to be defined a little bit about what sort of staff responsibility to kind of take care of and, and manage and 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 execute relative and then when does it come before you know uh somebody for for review and 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 judgment and then potentially someone else to handle appeals So, I mean, those are all just open questions that I think. Right, you know, right, right, right. Part and parcel. Right. So, right. so um, we will, as soon as we get another draft from the CRC, uh, Steve will send it around and we can continue to have this discussion. Um, were there any other questions about it or no? Okay. Uh, lunch cart regulations. So, I sent a draft, the most current draft to Steve. Steve sent it to Susan Malone and Rob Mora in lieu of a meeting that we were going to have in the interests of time. This would kind of, and then Steve did a super professional reformatting and added a bunch of stuff in following that meeting. So you have my draft, Steve's draft, and then Gaston's red line version with all the, the stuff on it that was reformatted and added in. Um, thank you so much for doing that, Steve. Can you walk us through this? Cause this looks really good. Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, I had um, I had some extra time this week, and I know that um, you've all been working very hard and doing a lot. I think a lot of really got a lot of great ideas for how to move forward with this, and I think Marion did a great job of um, collecting them all into a set of regulations. And um, I just you know keep this moving forward. I, I just tried to put it all together in the uh, the format we use, and just kind of organize things in such a way that uh, it all flowed. Um, when I had it together, there were a couple of things that, that jumped out to me. Um, mm -hmm. And so there's some things I've flagged, um, you know, for, for, um, for, you know, for us to look at. And, um, you know, I think there's certainly some more work that needs to be done in this to expand, especially with, um, 
enforcement. There's a couple of places where I think, um, you know, we could do a lot more, um, a, a little bit more fleshing out, but, um, you know, I think it'd be great. We've been working on this for a long time. I think it'd be great to get it passed um, before mm -hmm. the good weather's over. So um, I figured maybe the best way is just for me to kind of just go through the, from the beginning and just kind of- Yeah, absolutely. Point yeah. All right. um, so I really was doing a lot of brainstorming about um, what we can name it beyond this ungodly, um, ungodly clumsy, uh, you know, a license to operate a mobile food establishment in the public way. And um, it popped into my head at about 4.45. I don't think this is great, but it's a lot better than that. LCFT, Launch L Cart Food Truck, LC LCFT FT. license. The LCFT license. Okay. Okay. It's something. At least it rhymes. But it's um, not here. It's not. No, it's not that just popped okay. into my head at like at like four forty five. Okay. But um, that was I've really been trying to brainstorm about a, a name right. for this license because I think that's something um it would be good to have. So because um, I the stuck... the health department also has a license called mobile food something, which is right, which is yeah. So that's yeah. That's, kind of... It'd be nice if we could just call it a mobile food establishment license, but they issue that, and you don't right. need this license if you're only on private property. And there's a lot of them that come in for Amherst College. They rotate through a lot of food trucks and they never never mm -hmm. go on the public way um so it's um but i also don't really like lunch cart because it also applies to food trucks um right. so you can have the very clumsy yeah uh, license to operate a food truck in the public way or um i think it'd be good to have something a little punchier so lcft okay. is my um six out of ten brainstorm so far and i would be happy if somebody else came up with something better but um, okay. i guess we'll stick that in our back pocket so okay. for fees hundred dollars was um the annual license mm -hmm. um and that's what it was short-term license i just threw out twenty dollars per day um it's up to three days i you know i guess we'll um i don't know i don't know if that seems fair to people or i, I mean i'd be inclined to make the short-term license be as as uh, nominal as possible i don't know um i don't know what you all think but i if someone has the foresight to apply three weeks in advance to serve in a on a weekend um then i i guess i i i wouldn't i would feel fine letting them pay 20 dollars for the whole weekend i don't know so Steve, has short term, I can't see down there and I didn't get a, a lot of chance to look at it before. His short term um, changed from, I think we had like 72 hours to something. Oh, there we go. No more than yeah. three consecutive calendar days. So yeah, we could do like $20 for a, a three day or what is, I don't know, is that? I, yeah, yes. I just changed that because I could imagine somebody saying, oh, well, I was op only open five days today. That means I get five days tomorrow and five days the day after that and five or five hours. And then you can just say, oh, I have 72 hours of actually being oh, open over like saying. three weeks or something. So right. um, just to kind of parallel the um, okay. the short-term alcohol. Right. Doug, did you have a question? I was just going to say, you know, <clears throat> if, you know, many of these will operate, uh, if they're old food trucks, are going to have to pay parking as well. So that's another reason to kind of keep it in a lower price. Uh, I might suggest you know, if, if we do a per day, because someone might only want Friday and Saturday or something like that, you know, it's like maybe do $10 per day, five might be too small just from the standpoint of, of it costs Steve more time than that to sort of process the paperwork. So maybe 10 bucks per day, you know, that'd be 30 for the weekend if they did three, three days. I don't know if that doesn't seem too bad to me. I mean, you know, we could make it 750, but then we really, <laughs> it starts to get a little, little funky that way but yeah Hallie uh do we have it so that you know we could even put if you apply for a permanent license within 30 days from your short-term license we'll you know oh. give you that $20 credit or something like that just to encourage people like if they have idea. a good run yeah that's a good idea can you guys try to put it so you can see the um the red oh, line yeah. next to the the, the mm -hmm. clean one is that working for you guys Yes, yes, that sounds okay, good. good. Great. So credit towards permanent license, perhaps. All right. Okay. Um, so moving down purpose. Um, I just uh, just tweaked the language here a little bit. 
um, didn't necessarily want to bring brick and mortars into it. I don't, I don't know. I feel like that could be kind of a sensitive topic. So I just tried to make it a little bit okay. more, um, more neutral there. Authority didn't touch. Uh -huh. um, annual license. Um, that might have been in there somewhere down below, but I just tried to put that into definitions there. Okay. Um, I changed um, lunch cart everywhere here, generally to mobile food establishment. I think that's definitely something we can look at. Um, it is kind of a mouthful everywhere. And maybe we'd, if we had an acronym, we'd put it in the definitions here. Um, mm -hmm. But I was just trying to remove everything lunch cart in here. Um, so I, I have like an on street mobile food establishment, on sidewalk mobile food establishment. Um, I also, uh, yeah, I could put in typically a truck or typically a cart here. So people who might be a little bit confused would understand that. Um, moving down to, yeah, the short term, I just changed that. We, we went over that with the time. Okay. Um, so an application procedure. Um, I tried to have a little section here for all licenses. Um, so just they kind of know exactly what they did. I, I thought left and right photos of the cart. Um, that's something that they already have to do for the health license. So it wouldn't really be a big ask for them. But I can imagine okay. if somebody's requesting a certain space, um, you know, say I have a cart or I have a truck and, you know, we might have no idea how big it is. And that might help us in kind of judging um, the location. Um, you know, if, if somebody's trying to get, especially if it's one of those custom locations or, or, if, or even one of the smaller ones that we have in the pre-approved list, um, that might give us a sense of whether that'd be appropriate or not. Because um, it does say in the old and in the new regulations that the board would be making that determination that light locations might not be suitable for particular vehicles. So um, I thought that'd be helpful. Um, it's kind of a little bit about the, uh, the application process. Um, and I also thought that um, it might be good. So I was trying to kind of just more solidify these two categories of on street or on sidewalk, but um, so I, I thought that um, the board would make a determination at the hearing about whether it falls into one or, or the other of the categories. But I also thought that I also put a little provision in there for both classifications because I can imagine if somebody has a little tuck tuck or something, you know, you know some kind of weird, there might be some weird vehicle that, you know, you'd be okay with having in, um, you know, on the street or on the sidewalk. And so um, I don't know what you guys think about that, but I just left that in. Um, and kind of going off of um, a lot of the discussions that we've had earlier in the year, um, and some of the things in the draft, um, I kind of set a list of the pre-approved locations and it just says you can go, you can go in between them. And, um, you know, it used to be that you could apply for um, any, you know, you could apply for one of the locations or all the locations. And then if you applied from all of them, you could go between them. So I kind of just let it default to that. Um, I think there's definitely some conversation to be had there, but I'll try to stay in order here. Um, health licensing um you know what, what can really be a headache for a lot of um a lot of uh, applicants is that um you know i think the, the the select board version these regulations require that you have the health permit before the application could be done but that's a lengthy process and a lot of times um i think the health inspector has to do an on-site inspection the day of to actually finally issue the license um so i said that um in here that um, you know, applications will be, you know, you need to have your hawkers and pillars need to have your sales tax registration. Um, but if you, um, if you have a, and actually thinking about it now, maybe, um, well, I was going to say, maybe I was just thinking that maybe, um, they should have to have submitted it first before it'll be complete, but I guess it doesn't really matter either way. Um, but yeah, the, the, the board would receive and vote on an application before a health license is issued, but administratively. I would hold it back and not actually issue the license until the health license issued. So that way they can do both, both processes in parallel. Um, it would kind of compress the time schedule a little bit for them and make, make it a little bit easier to get to the process. Doug? Yeah, if I, if I could, just on that topic, I, I think you're right. I think the way we want to phrase it in the, you know, in, in here, and I, I, you may have it phrased this way, but basically, you know, it's that, um, You've got to attain this license uh, before opening. So it's it. In, in other words, the the license we're going to issue is contingent upon having that. Uh, so that's really you know the way to phrase it. It doesn't preclude and, and such that it doesn't preclude them from going ahead and working on that license. So they the the, the health inspection license, you know, 
we don't want to make it uh, dependent upon having this license or vice versa. So what we want to do though is that for for our license to be fully uh, in effect, uh, it does have to be obtained. So that's you know, uh, I think that's you know the, it, it it is contingent upon uh, completion of that step but not required to be in place beforehand or something to that effect. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I was going for is that the right. board might the board might vote on it, but sometimes like with the short terms, you know, we say, you know, it's approved contingent on the police chief's approval. It would just be approved, you know, once you get the health, once the health license is issued. So so if they never get the health license for some reason, then the license never actually vests. But at least that can help um, people work around, you know, a schedule of the board only meeting once every two weeks when a lot of the times these people are kind of last minute with things. Right. right. So something like approved can be approved by the board, but will not be effective until then. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tried to. Okay. Yeah. I tried to, okay. to spell that out. Maybe it's not that clear, right, but. Um, see. Order to assist. Okay. Final issuance of the M. Okay. Contingent on the health MFE license being issued first. Yeah. I think we're definitely going to have to clean up some of these acronyms okay. and everything, but I just tried to. Try to just get the structure together so we can keep keep moving forward yeah, no, with this. It looks good. Okay. Um, annual licenses, kind of boilerplate about the time renewal. Um, you know, don't have to provide a new uh, new pictures or the new hawkers and perils license list expired. Um, I oh, said the, if the other thing I would suggest there is just that, or if they uh, significantly alter their cart, their device. Oh, their, that's mm. a very good point. I'm, uh, uh, I'm I'm taking notes on paper here, so um, these are all very helpful. Um, yeah, because, you know, you might upgrade a little bit or, you know, get a new one. And so, you know, we want to, we don't need a license, you know, if you're using the same cart you used last year, or using the same truck you used last year, that's fine. But if you upgrade, we want to kind of see it, I think. That's a really good point. We probably want to reclassify it too, if it's, you know, you went from a tiny little push cart to a huge truck. Right. It'll change, you know, we may have, if we put restrictions on which locations they can be at because of the size. You know, if they went smaller, then they might have more available to them. Or if they went larger, then it excludes a few more. That's that's part and parcel of that. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's that's very helpful. Yeah, I've been writing everything down here on paper, so I'll I'll make some changes once we're uh, once we're all through. Um, so one interesting thing, I was kind of going through it again with Rob um, just in the you know the the hour before our meeting when um, when I sent that to you guys, and he had an interesting idea of. Um, short-term licenses can just be administratively issued just by, by staff without going to the board. And I thought that was interesting, especially for, hmm. um, for things in a short time period. I, um, I, it's an interesting, I mean, I guess what I would, what I would um, so just to brainstorm off, off your point, Steve, um, I'm wondering if we know there's a weekend when, or an event where people are going to want to and we're concerned that our three-week rule is going to frustrate the potential of the event to be a success could we um in effect delegate uh for that three-week period once we kind of know something is coming we, we at that point delegate authority to do the administrative license um for the short term um that's somewhere between the proposal you you advanced and I think where where the the draft was so I guess just to keep the conversation going yeah I think that's um but only I think in that's, certain 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 conditions would have to apply before I, th I think that's a good idea yeah and um yeah certain conditions apply or the board makes a determination or something because um in my experience um a lot of these event organizers will be scrambling like days before the event just trying to find a food truck because somebody drops out or they didn't have enough or this happens or that happens or somebody finds a better a better event to go to or whatever and um i think something else that's really been let go is every every mobile food establishment that's been on the town common really should be licensed into this because it's a public way it doesn't really matter if it's affiliated with a rotary fair or a uh or the farmer's market or whatever. It's kind of been our practice, but, um, and the old regulations really took, didn't take that into account at all. Um, but I think that now that we're making a good framework, we really should um, actually be issuing the licenses that that activity requires. So um, I think we will get a lot more of these types of things. So I think that's a, a good idea from Gaston. 
mm-hmm. put, put took notes in what, that. What, yeah. what this in between allows us to do is can kind of say, listen, go ahead and approve it so long as they meet X, Y, and Z condition. You can tell them that this is what we're looking for for this event. I actually really like that idea. Yeah, as a, maybe event level guidelines. Mm-hmm. The, the, the other thing I would suggest is it might be something where, you know, again, it, it, it talk about compressed timelines. It could be a circumstance where we might not be meeting, you know, the, the event could be coming into fruition in a time frame between our meetings. And so it could be a thing where we empower the chair to delegate that authority to the, to the building commissioner also. You know what I'm saying? Is, is, so if it's not just, you know, if it's, it's something where we know the event's coming and we say, oh, in that circumstance, uh, you know, the commissioner can do it under these, these conditions. It could be a thing where we empower the chair to say, uh, you know, to grant that authority to the commissioner. And so then the board still has, you know, some level of control, even if it's delegated to the, to the chair. Okay. Hmm. Something else I just thought is, um, you know, maybe we, maybe if it's um, within the town common, because we don't really want to make the town common itself a designated area because we don't put people driving on on random days, but, um, you know, maybe anything within the town common would be delegated for administrative approval. So it would be, you know, certainly be done in association with some other event. It would have to be reserved. Um, but if somebody just wants to do, you know, some event and just wants to go park on Sunset Ave or something, I mean, that should really always go to review. Right. Right. Okay. I would I would suggest that you know some of the um, delegation of the of the you know uh, what is it town parks and ways that the council has has given to the town manager's office that language may be helpful in framing what you're talking about there, Steve. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Doug. Um. Okay. So I tried to, with this whole section is kind of clean up the language surrounding the, um, the locations and just make it a little bit more uniform. Um, so I said the board has a list below of the pre-approved locations where um, any licensee of each classification type may operate. Um, annual licensees that move between the allowed locations that are classification type as they wish and are not restricted to any particular location. Um, short-term licensees must specify the locations. Um, I, I had that S in there, the plural, because, um, you know, ideally, hopefully, maybe, especially if it is the fee for the short term is dropped a little bit, you know, maybe somebody wants to try out Amherst and see, um, you know, how is this town for, you know, am I going to get any business? Maybe I'll stay out here for a couple of days and see if, you know, see how it is on Saturday afternoon or something. And um, so maybe they could, you know, they're here for a weekend, they try one spot, try another spot. So, um, the board reserves reserves the right to restrict the availability of particular locations for particular licensees if the MFE is unable to reasonably fit in those locations. This is something I think we we should um maybe folk you know do a little thinking on because um even if we do have the pictures um you know we're not going to mentally compare the the truck to all um you know thirteen of these locations in our heads. So um, so do we wanted- require measurements like dimensions of the are you gonna, is that in there? Is that helpful at all? Yeah. Um, I mean, I could put that in the application form I, and somewhere I have, um, you know, the application that, form shall be in a form approved by the board. And that could be something we put in. Cause I thought, I thought there might right. be a lot of little details like that, that we could just stick in the form. And I'll take note of that dimensions. Right, because I know that, you know, we're imagining all different shapes and sizes of lunch carts or whatever you want to call them. But I do think like a lot of them are manufactured for the purpose. So there might be kind of a standard, a series of standard sizes. What I'm thinking. Yeah, Doug. I mean, speaking of the dimensions, no, I think the dimensions are are a useful piece of information. Right. And I think the other thing is that we should, uh, along with this, just uh, just internally, it's not a regulation thing. I think for each of the pre-approved locations, mm-hmm. you know, sort of measure off the. And I'm not saying we need to mark up the sidewalks with like paint or anything, <laughs> but kind of go to those spaces. And this is something that that Rob Mora and you, Steve, could probably really. Uh, spend a little time with. I mean, I, I think the select board actually did a walk about it, if I remember correctly, we went to some of those spots, but sort of lay out what's the dimension that fits here that mm-hmm. doesn't block the sidewalk and egress, you know, and, and mobility for people that are that are uh, trying to get by on the sidewalk with a wheelchair or, or uh, other, you know, uh, uh, supports like that. So, you know, then it, you know, and it, the location sort of define those dimensions in which it must sit. 
for no other reason than just so that when we come and look at them and we look at dimensions that someone's given us, like, does that fit the spot or not fit the spot? You know, that's a, that's a bit of triage that, that we could do, uh, you know, in advance. And so that we, you know, even when they're filling out the application, we would say, you would know by looking at the, at the sort of, you know, uh, locations and sizes like, oh, you're not going to fit on these three. So I can tell you right now, they're going to say no to those. You know, even though we formally would do it at the at the at the uh, at our meeting, I really I really like that idea, Doug, because um, you know, I was kind of starting to move in that direction on, on the on the issue of uh, hours of operation, um, which we will get into in a minute. But I was saying maybe that would be set by location, and it would probably be a good service if um, you know. It wouldn't really be all that much work to get the GIS out, you know, get a GIS, you know, maybe we move this um, instead of in here, we have a, a, you know, another addendum document or something that has, you know, a page for each one with, um, you know, a little map of where you're allowed to be um, right. and the hours, the specific hours of operation. There might be some places where, um, you know, sure, go, no, it's just commercial around there. You know, you can be there till one if you want to. And there's other where, you know, you're right next to the uh, retirement home, you know, maybe you should be in by six. Um, and then, and maybe, you know, if you had two hot dog carts, I mean, in front of the, uh, where the uh, falafel guy is, you could fit a little hot dog cart there too. And that would allow, you know, if everybody fits within this regulated area. Um, yeah, I think that's a really good idea to maybe dive more into detail on those. Um, and again, that doesn't necessarily need to be in regulation, but I think just as far as a frame for, you know, sort of helping the applicant as well as yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It's. It's, it's business friendly because if you're new to the community, you, you just know you want to put a truck somewhere to have a guide that breaks it down for you would be very helpful. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And west side of Kendrick Park, I mean, yeah, a lot of, you know, you have to Google where Kendrick Park is and then orient yourself. And um, yeah, a lot of these things. I think that is a great idea. Um, so thank you guys. Um, Yeah, time of day restrictions on any pre-approved or requested location. Um, I think that could definitely be important for, um, for uh, you know, if somebody has some location in a neighborhood or something. And, and, you know, some of these, I wasn't really thinking about it very much, but there might be somewhere it's in the middle of all nothing but commercial. And, you know, maybe it would be fine. You know, maybe the board would want to just say, yeah, anyone in this location is not near anything. Sure, you can just go, go, go to midnight every night if you want to. And then, um, you know, I think we'll, we'll take a closer look at that. Um, so there, this was uh, just slightly changed from something we had so that Marion had there. Um, so can operate in handicap spaces, commercial loading zones, or other restricted spaces without, I, I added without special permission granted by the board for a particular date and time, because maybe there's, you know, if they block off the parking lot um, behind Antonio's for, um, you know, for a food truck vessel or something, and somebody's parked sideways across the loading zone in the handicap spot, you know, if it's all blocked off anyway, it doesn't matter. So, yeah. Oh, sure. Sure. Right. Um, So other locations, um, applicants may apply for permission to use locations other than those pre-approved. The board will consider these locations on a case-by-case -case basis. We'll make a determination weighing the interests of public safety and unreasonable disturbance to abutters. Um, if approved, this location is added to a list of allowable locations for that particular licensee. And the licensee may move between that location and the pre-approved location. So I accidentally forgot to copy over the abutters notice, um, but I do think oh, that right. is a good idea um, okay. for other locations um and maybe we would kind of um you know tweak that a little bit because maybe there's some places where we wouldn't want to do that um i think you know um marion had some good language in there we might want to you know make a little bit more specific with you know butters within what distance and um you know would it just be the butters list from downstairs which wouldn't necessarily go to every tenant or something um but um i think i think we should um i think that is a good idea to have there in some form or another but i just forgot to copy that over so um this language of uh, weighing the interest of public safety and unreasonable disturbance to others, I thought, um, I guess that's mostly what we'd be concerned about. Right. Um, the, the other thing I think about with regard to the, that language is that unreasonable disturbance to other abutters also includes, although not expressly so, but it also includes, um, you know, other businesses. So, if, you know, if, if, if they want to pick a spot that's right in front of Miss Saigon or, you know, some other, you know, or Antonio's or something, I'm, I'm pretty sure Antonio's would be negatively affected if you put it in the 
you know, the parking spot right in front of their restaurant. So, you know, those are, that's, that's a disturbance to and a butter. So I think that covers that's that case as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a great point. Um, I was just kind of thinking because most of those, uh, you know, the abutters notices that were provided you know, for, for everything, for ZBA to liquor license to everything, pretty much only goes to the property owner. And um, I wonder if we might want to make language about, um, you know, every common victual licensee within 300 feet as well or something so that we can make sure the business owner actually gets it if they have an absentee landlord. Uh, okay. Right. I, uh, I mean, would, would saying tenant be, be the, I mean, because I, I think we're, interested not only in the feedback of the whoever owns a building but the people living there as well right so i think in a, a perfect world absolutely but we have no the town doesn't really have any idea who lives in apartments or um we, we don't of, do to the residents of um i mean i don't know if we even have you know if you have a uh oh uh, you know let's say you have a, 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 a four family apartment building um we wouldn't even know how they're numbered really um okay we don't, yeah, we don't have any information about that. I mean, for every, literally everything else, ZBA to the ZBA, actually, if, if, if there's a project in a, in a building, the landlord's required to post it in the hallway. Um, but, um, I, th I think it would be great if we could, but, um, we just don't really have the, the database to do so, which, um, at least with common victual licensees, I have that information all at my fingertips so we could um, make right. sure it goes to them. So if you said something like, um, I don't know, resident property owner or common victual licensee. Just um, to, is that I mean, I would, I would maybe say, um, you know, whatever the, you know, whatever the uh, assessor's office puts out for um, mm -hmm. a butter's list that they're, they're kind of the experts with that within 300 feet and any common victual licensee within 300 feet. Okay. Sounds good. If I may just, you know, to that point, um, I think that if the, uh, you know, Steve, if you have the street address, um, you know, that we could, we could ask the applicant to, I mean, the post office has every deliverable mail address within a given zone and within a given, you know, street address. So that, that's an alternative, it, you know, sort of like how many hoops you want to have them jump through, but, but that would be a way to uh, access additional uh, address, um, you know, information, like if you wanted to send to the resident of and get all the people in particular you know, apartment complex. Yeah, it, it it starts to be a bit much at that starts, point. But. I think, especially for some of the short-term license, that's a lot to do yeah, for. That's a good point to bring up the short term. So I'd almost wonder, you know, if there aren't if you know, it doesn't really seem right to have a butters notices for a short-term license. I yeah, think I for don't, an annual certainly. I think I just put for like new annual ones in the original draft. Okay. I don't remember, but I thought short term it's like but like let's say somebody wanted to um let's say somebody wanted to put um you know a, a little push hot dog cart in between like right where the um on the parking garage behind antonio's you know kind of right by um in between like you know the there's the um the kind of the stairway little building there that you can come up and then in you know that that center uh, alleyway there in between the bank center that's heading towards town hall somebody wanted to set up a hot dog truck there and they had every resident um even if we were able to get that list from the post office which um you know we don't really have any professional relationship with them but every butter within 300 feet would be every single person in area and whaling probably you know nine i mean i don't know how many units there are along the front of north pleasant street there but um 40 units maybe 50 60 um it could get it could get pretty crazy pretty quickly. Um, I mean, I think um, it's really. I mean, I think that you know tenants are kind of under considered in every public notice thing yeah. that um, the town does from ZBA to to liquor licenses to everything. But um, I don't know how much we can reinvent the you know re, even if it's a much better wheel. I don't know how much we can reinvent the wheel for just lunch cards. Oh, guess not. I, yeah, I mean, well, the lunch cards are less problematic because you know, you can kick them out from one weekend to the next. So I think what we need is a, a prominent sign with the right phone number. I don't know if it's to call your office, Steve, um, for like any, you know, any concerns and complaints to call a certain number so that you can have that comment period by people who are interested after the fact, after it goes up the first time. 
Yeah, I like that idea. Um, I don't know how well they would take to, you know, complaints, call this number and have to stick that up on the side of their cart. But maybe if we, I mean, we can certainly put a very, if we could use a different, I think we would probably want to use a different design for the license anyway, because we're going to have some kind of specialized information. We could put a big, you know, inspection services with a big phone number at the bottom. And um, how do you but, like my driving? Call. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you start getting complaints about bad hot dogs. I know. I was right. going to say, you don't want to open up that can of worms. You don't want a bad hot dog stand in town. <laughs> <laughs> Applicants must be suggested to a taste test. And if uh, less than three to the five of the license commissioners like it, they right. were, application will be rejected. <laughs> right. um, that's definitely better. something to think about. Is, um, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll do a little bit more brainstorming on that. Um, so for the uh, parking fees, um, I am meeting with the uh, oh there we go. Uh, parking fees. I am meeting with the collector's office um, on uh, Monday or Tuesday to go over uh, that what they would like for the f food trucks and a couple other things. So mm -hmm. um, I think we'll we'll revisit all this section. Perfect. Um, availability. Oh, I skipped. Yeah, look, actually, I, yes, I I actually left this in double, so I skipped this when we were talking about it, but I left it in the regulations again, so we can talk about it twice. So um, this was something that was, um, so yeah, we, this was something that wasn't addressed at all in the old regulations. And this is what Marion had had. Um, and I do really, I mean, I think there's a million ways you can go about it. And um, it would be pretty unfair if somebody applied for a new license and then started taking the falafel guy's spot 15 minutes before he showed up every day. Right. But um, I think that this is ultimately the right compromise because, um, there's a million different dispute resolution techniques we can get into. Right. And um, there's such a multitude of different wow. disputes and things like that. And ultimately, um, you know, it's, we're regulators, not mediators. And I don't know how much. Um, so I think that first part is the right compromise. The second part, um, I would be more open to that if it's a custom location. I think we'd have to tweak this location. It certainly shouldn't be in perpetuity because it's a long time, um, but I, I could kind of uh, go either way with this. How about just ordinarily, um, uh, I mean, a statement about the, the norm is to respect where people have been putting the trucks. Can we, you know? I think a statement about respect would be good. Um, that's all, you know, I think that that is good to at least put put our, um, our desire out there because, um, it's just so hard whenever you get in because that, you know, that that circumstance of somebody just getting there half an hour before him every day is really unfair. But if you right. said he's the only one who can go there, I mean, I think he's been on vacation for like the last three weeks. And if there's somebody else who really wanted to go there, they just couldn't. Um, or if he left at two o'clock every day and somebody wanted to do you know a night shift there um, yeah. and they just couldn't if it was reserved. So, did, so oh, no, sorry, go ahead, Gaston. No, I mean, I was just going to say, if this is a problem, we can deal with it. It's not a problem now. So I, I'm not yeah. Yeah. stressed right. about it. I like I like an idea of statement about respect. So th is that you're talking about that pertains to the the sentence about the new location? Yeah, so for new the locations, new location. I guess that was just more so there's kind of yeah two parts of it. I think this is the right compromise overall, but I do right, think right, it's right. good to it's good to add something about, you know, you know, be you know, please be respectful of, you know, long stand people who have long standing regular locations or something. We'll have to think about that language, but I think it's good to include okay. something like that. Okay. Um, for this part about the new location, um, I wouldn't say first rights in perpetuity, um, but um, yeah, I was a little confused by this. Um, but I think, I think, I think, I, I think I can, I think I was confused when I wrote, when I wrote this comment, but I think I understand it now. I think you were trying to say um, he gets, you know, he gets kind of first pick there, there for however long, um, but whoever applies that location first, oh, kind of be first. Yes, first. Is that was, what you're yeah. trying to say? Okay, I think yeah. so. It was a long time ago, but I think that's yeah. what it was. Yeah. Um, so I could kind of go either way about that. I mean, I can imagine, um, you know, maybe somebody and the idea, the, the location always jumped out to me is fantastic is on the west side of Kendrick Park. Uh, right. Actually, is that already on there? It's already on there, I think. Yeah, wow. it is. All right. People are way ahead of me, um, but I can, I can imagine, you know, maybe somebody, no wonder it's in the top of my head. Thank you, Doug. Um, I can imagine, you know, maybe somebody, you know, discovers a really good location that um, doesn't really bother too many people and um, gets really good business. Um, and, you know, if we get multiple people applying for it, you know, probably we should 
eventually be making it into a uh, into a um, into a, uh, a a permanent low pre-approved location. But um, but you know, I think I think again we get in the same problem of reserve locations where um, you know somebody could reserve that location and then um, just never use it, and then nobody else can if they want. I mean, I guess this is kind of a, an edge circumstance of um, if some if you know multiple people want the same location, but it could happen. I mean, if we get more business, somebody finds a location that's not that's really working out, um, and um, so if that happens, you know, I think again, if that person, the first person who finds it is going on vacation for a month, the other person then just can't use it. Um, if it's just, you know, the first, the first person has kind of uh, higher seniority, then he can just show up and kick the other guy out. Um, I kind of thought, I kind of really, you know, I don't know. I, I feel, I feel like, I think there is a lot, I'd be interested to hear what you guys are thinking about this, but I think it really ultimately does usually just come back to how much dispute resolution can we really get into as a regulatory board? So, uh, yeah. so, so here's the thing I'm thinking about is that if it's a new location, um, you know, that's going to be something that's added to that particular applicant's uh, license. They're the only one that has the right to be in that location at that point, because everybody else that has a license only can be in the places that are either pre-approved or are on their license. So it only becomes a thing if a second, uh, you know, license uh, requests that, that place. Yeah, exactly. Oh, at the same so, time, right? Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. So it would have to be like on a renewal. Like if, like, let's say I pick something and like I found a spot on uh, Coles Lane in North Amherst that I think is the bomb because uh, our friends at Jake's aren't open. So I'm going to set up my little egg cart, uh, you know, there. And suddenly, you know, so I get my license. I'm the only one that can go to there because, you know, I'm the only one that's got that approved on their license. But then when we go to renewal, someone else may go, oh, then it's that's a good spot. I think if that happens, they would have to that that second person would have to then put it on the renewal application if they'd like another spot. And I think what we would have to do at that point is recognize, oh, this is a spot that multiple people have requested. Do we add it to our list of of pre-approved spots? And then the standard rules apply about kind of first come first serve and you know all, all the things we've been discussing. So I think you know in some ways the the new spot is is kind of a good way for if you're coming to town one of the best things you can do is is find a new spot because it's yours essentially because your license is the only one that's going to have that uh allowed um and then you know so I, I think that's you know if if i was advising a food cart person i'd say hey find a really good spot that's not on the pre-approved list because you kind of have exclusive rights to that spot uh until the renewal process and then others may want to be on that spot as well mm -hmm. So I think we don't, it, it doesn't create a problem until renewal time. Right. I and, think then I think we, and then we can consider whether it needs to be a pre-approved spot or not. I think that's a great idea, Doug. And I realize I've been kind of jumping around a lot during this, uh, this discussion, but that also made me think, um, you know, it would probably make sense if annual licensees could apply for a special location mid-cycle. Um, I don't see why we wouldn't. And that kind of got me thinking that, um, you yeah, know, I guess we won't go too deep into this, but I mean, if, uh, you know, if we're going to have uh, a butter's nose requirements for an annual location and one of our, um, annual licensees wants to do a little try, try out a new location. I mean, maybe we would get, have figured, you know, do some kind of short-term authorization at that location. Um, but that's a rabbit hole. I'll write something out when we, when we, when I clean this up, but, um, <laughs> well, but, uh, license. It's an alteration of license. It would be like when you know liquor, yeah, license changes their manager. They've got to come back exactly. And yeah, their manager. They've got to come back and tell us about their new location, and we can approve it or disapprove it or whatever at that point. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah. So you so you think it should just so if if there is that kind of mid cycle you know alteration of license dynamic would you would you say that um um in your in your framework Doug that uh it's just the first person to get it just does get it until they don't renew the license or um, until it's made, until it's made uh, into a into a pre-approved location. Yeah, because the thing is, is that you know the way we've done it earlier in the in the in the document, we've basically said if you you know request a new location, we evaluate whether it, you you know it makes sense, and we say yes, we put that location on your license. Everybody else's license doesn't have that because it didn't exist before now, so it doesn't by default 
automatically guarantee that spot to everybody else as an available, like the pre-approved. So yeah. that's where I read that's where I read the regulation is that you know a new location is not part of the pre-approved list. So if if you as an individual have, have gotten a new location and gotten that approved by us, you're really the only one that can be there because you've been vetted with us. And and the thing is, is everybody else, you know, you should be excluded partly because we need to evaluate whether or not their cart fits in that location. I mean, just as a simple sort of, you know, you know, like let's say you've got a, a small cart you fit um, and we say, okay, that's okay for the, you know, this is a new location, it works for you, great, you fit in the spot, it's safe for people to be around. And then there's somebody else that has a pre-existing license that wants to be there, but their cart's not the right size. We would need to have we'd need to review that. So they'd have to do either, like we were saying, a mid-year, you know, alteration of their license, or we wait until the renewal time and see if anybody wants to apply for that new spot. You know, we've got to still apply the the so, some of the metrics of safety to to whether somebody can use that that new spot. So, no, I, I definitely agree with you there. I think um, the question I'm trying to bring up is is um. You know, somebody gets a new special spot, and we'll say it's that that you know that area by um, above the garage there, like we were saying, um, and somebody else applies for it um, because they want to. You know, could could we issue um, a special spot approval for more than one? Um, and if not, how long does that first person get to just claim it exclusively? The first year until they don't renew the license. I I would suggest that if if. In that circumstance where you know sort of one person did a special spot if a second person you know two months later requests it as well and we feel like the you know it sort of fits then those two people have access to the spot and it falls back to this you know general rule of availability okay yeah that's that's um that's kind of exactly what i was thinking with deleting this blue stuff so yeah, yeah. It becomes a reality show the may the best truck win. Yeah. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I mean, I, the only thing I worry about is that we make it too confusing for people looking at pulling the license, you know, that we're not regulating people away who might be wanting to bring a food truck to Amherst. Like, you know, I, yeah, let, um, let, let's let, let them come and then let's work on some of these issues i think what we would probably do um, or i would probably do is um it's uh is probably make a new document for a guideline to applying for food truck stuff because it's so it's super confusing with health too um and then this kind of comes in and it would probably be a, a good time to make a once this once we were done with this project it'd be a good time to to make you know not um not everything spelled out in sections and um, regulatory language but just a you know layman's guide this is what you have to do you can request a special spot if you want to and cover the whole health process too. So it's kind of a one, one stop shop for um, anybody who's coming in. Although I will say uh, a lot of those uh, mobile food people who do bounce from town to town are pretty, pretty grizzled with this kind of stuff because they get to deal with it everywhere they go. Right. But um, I think we'll, unless somebody else says something, I think we'll move on from that point. Um, hours of operation. Um, we have here um, kind of some of what we had before um, should be approved by the board. Um, have to be open if they're there. Can't be there outside the hours of operation. Um, and I kind of had the idea of um, rather than somebody specifying their hours of operation, which seems like kind of a fiction with a, a mobile food truck to me, because um, you know I'm sure the falafel. You know, I think the, my experience, the falafel guy. You know, he might not come one day. He might have something to do. He might pack in early if it's really hot or if it's raining. He's getting no business. Um, so I thought, and um, you know, maybe I think it probably would make sense, like we were saying earlier, to do it on a per location basis potentially. But just kind of have blanket hours that um, you could be open during these times, and if you want to be open later, special approval by the board on a per location basis. Um, so if you want to be open until midnight at uh, Kendrick Park, then you kind of have to apply for that. And it's, um, how do you is guys it, think? So about is there, the, with, the question is, is there any kind of business where we would want to restrict the hours? I mean, if there isn't, then your proposal seems fine to me. Um, I mean, uh, I've gotten a lot of interest this year, actually, nothing that's actually materialized, but a lot of interest of late night, like, you know, open till one or two in, in the morning. And, um, mm -hmm. I'm totally in favor of that, um, as long as location's all right. But I can, um, 
we've never we haven't had that in at least a long time not in my time of being an amherst anyway and um i can imagine that definitely ruffling some feathers um Right. So that, but that works with the idea of having uh, a standard time of, uh, you said before midnight, I don't know if that's too late for some areas. I was saying um, you're kind of, everybody can be open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And if you want to, okay. and I'm, I'm totally open. I'm to, I, I kind of yeah. pulled these out of a hat. So if, yeah. if people think different times are appropriate or right. setting, I mean, like Hallie was saying, we don't want to make it too complicated. So maybe we wouldn't want to set hours of operation for each different pre-approved spot, or maybe we would, I don't know, but um you know, I think I would this say, is yeah, I think I'd this is really good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I was just kind of thinking, yeah, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You're always good. And if you want to be open later than that, we'll, we'll give you that approval on a per location basis. Um, I mean, I, I would 8 a.m. be disruptive anywhere. That's that's what I'm asking, in, in which case a, a later start time. I don't know. Yeah, maybe we can think about that. We can think about those times. I kind of just yeah. pulled it, pulled it out of a hat. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, 8 a.m., I mean, that's before the sun sets in June. Um, those days we're starting to miss, but. Um, so um, traffic obstruction, pretty much the same. Just change the title a little bit and replace lunch cart with mobile food establishment. This was this was somewhere else here and I just stuck it in this section to kind of consolidate it. Oh, great, okay. Um, just dropped, uh, dropped loud music because you probably don't want soft music either. No, we, yeah. yeah. Um, or use sound amplification. And I said outside of pre-approval for special events. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure there's like a fried dough truck at the carnival that might have music or something, but um, mm -hmm. kind of keep it for normal things. Um, crash recycling unchanged. Um, I put this, uh, I know we had kind of done a lot of discussion about this topic. So I put this in a section called pollution. Um, I don't know if anybody has a different title or maybe um, I'm sure there's some other kind of uh, yeah. health type things we could stick in there. Um, Limitation of available licenses. I oh, um, so, sorry, just on that. Um, uh, I think electric batteries is the other thing. Yes, that. Oh be yeah. Good. I'll, I'm, I'll put that in my uh, my paper notes here. You, you might call it pollution mitigation. Oh, good. That sounds a lot better. We don't want to sound like we're pro pollution. That's what. It, yeah, that's kind of how it sounds now. Like we're, we're encouraging it. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, the other thing just on that topic is um, that we may want to mention is that the cart must must comply with all uh, town you know, sort of regulations uh, regarding uh, containers and and serving materials and that sort of stuff. Because that's a good one. Number, like you can't do, you know, you can't do uh, uh, non recyclable uh, to go stuff. You know, you can't use styrofoam. In all right. Right. So that needs to be yeah. there. I mean, more for informational purposes, but we should make it clear that that those regulations for um, that we apply to all our brick and mortar businesses should apply here as well. I think that's a great point and that fits in perfectly with the pollution mitigation yeah. title. Um, so uh, limitation of available licenses. Um, I remember, I think Doug had mentioned that that was a contentious discussion um, when the select board originally adopted these. Or maybe maybe I was talking with Alyssa. I was talking to somebody, but um, I, I guess that I was was that you, Doug? That I was talking to about that. It, it might have been Alyssa. Might have been Alyssa. Okay, um, but um, I think she said that it was kind of contentious when um, you know the number when this came there. They did a lot of thinking about it, but um, I think we'd probably be <laughs> if if any if past time we'd be really successful if we came anywhere near these limits. Oh, I know. Um, and uh, and, um, you know, I, um, I don't really know if it's that necessary. Um, Rob had a, had a good idea of maybe um, the board may choose to put a limitation if, um, you know, if we hit, you know, I don't know, I wouldn't say six and four, but I'd say maybe if we hit eight and six or something that the board may choose to um, put a cap on it. If, you know, we start having real runaway problems with people fighting over spaces and things. Um, Could we say put a cap or restrict? days and hours of operations. You know, maybe we say you can come Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and this truck can come Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, or something like that. Yeah, I like that idea. Um, I but I, I think that would almost require a, a wholesale revision of the regs because then we're talking about designating spots. And um, I think that would be probably the best move if we actually did have uh, out of control 
um, overpopulation of food trucks, but that would almost be like, if we put it in, in here, it would almost require like a whole second set of regulations. Right. How about um, triggering like a public comment whenever we hit a certain new number of licenses or something that we put it on the agenda for, for comment from the town? Or yeah, maybe, maybe the board may limit the number of licenses available after a public hearing if there's problems or something. Right. So what I would suggest there is, is that we not pick a number because it may be one of those things where uh, knowing the number is going to be hard to figure out. You know, it's sort of like the old thing about pornography. I know it when I see it kind of thing. Um, you know, but I, I think that, that uh, you know, the other thing I think about, just to begin with this and then finish with the other point I'm going to make, which is just that, you know, you get, issued, you, know, you get your license and issued in January. If the problem pops up in, you know, August, you know, we don't want to penalize or punish, you know, all those people who, who came first because somebody else, you know, came in and suddenly tipped the scale in a way that doesn't make sense. So some of it's on us to issue the license. So some of what we may want to put here is that, um, you know, just that the, you know, that the board will uh, review the number of licenses and the active use of those licenses in determining whether to issue any new licenses. And so that gives us the ability to say, we can't issue the license. We love you, we'd love to have it, but just given who we've got on right now and how busy they are and how much they're showing up, we're going to, to restrict uh, that circumstance. And so that way we don't penalize people that are already here. Um, and we also, you know, can tell the, I mean, we'll, you know, the, the person won't, I mean, they'll get a rejected license and, you know, it, they won't get the license to begin with and then have expectations change. So I think that may be a way to approach it too, is that, uh, you know, uh, you know, the, the board reserves the right upon issuing new licenses to determine whether or not there's still capacity in the town for, for, uh, you know, new applicants. Yeah. Then, you know, pick a number because, you know, it's like, you know, the falafel guy's always Monday, Wednesday and Friday, you know, and so, you know, there's some time available on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday or whatever. Great. You issue another license. But if if he's there six days a week and there's, you know, and every other spot's filled, too, then it's like, well, we just don't issue the license to begin with. It's like, sorry, we just don't have the space or capacity. No, I think that's a really good idea. And um, Hallie, I really liked your idea, too. And thinking more about it, I think we could put that in. Um, in kind of just a couple sentences and yeah yeah we could definitely you know add that um that the board will um you know take into consideration the, the, you know if i'm just getting re restating this correctly doug the board would um and maybe we just make a uh make a sentence i wouldn't call it overcrowding but i mean a section i wouldn't call it overcrowding but you know a section kind of about this problem um and um you know the board will you know take into consideration you know the the current population of um you know, how how would you phrase it, Doug, succinctly? I would say that you know, um, and I think you can call it limitation on available license or or, or on new licenses would be um, the board will consider existing licenses and their operational hours uh, when issuing new licenses and may restrict or deny an application based on pre existing licenses. Yeah, and Hallie, we could, um, we could maybe. I was thinking maybe, you know, we could, um, you know, if if, uh, you know, if there's a, a high incidence of, um, you know, overcrowding or disputes between, you know, mobile food, food operators, that you know, the board reserves the right to, um, you know, restrict licenses to certain locations and times or under. I don't know. It's not really exigent circumstances, but phrase it something like that. That'd be a little bit more succinct. Yeah. I was kind of thinking that we would have to um, describe the process by which we restrict that, but I guess at that point, you know, it's probably will never happen. And if at that point, you know, you well, just got to do what you got to do. Yeah. I mean, I don't think we need to say anything, but if we did, it wouldn't necessarily have to be processed. We could identify the kinds of considerations, impact on neighboring businesses, on the neighborhood, you know, on health. I mean, we, we could create a laundry list. I don't know if we really need to. Um, but the purpose would be to be clear that we're not just being discriminatory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll make, no, I think all those ideas come together pretty well, so 
Um, yeah, well, I think that you know some of our earlier stuff in here, uh, you know, relative to issuing licenses and considerations we have are are still the ones we would apply in that circumstance, unless there's you know additional things that we consider. Because I think we you know, we consider space and and uh, functionality and safety and abutters and abutters include other you know licensees in a sense. Yeah, um, that's true. All right, so. I'll put all those thoughts together into something and bring them back for next time. Um, concerns and complaints about lunch cart operations. Um, I think this needs a little bit of fleshing out. Um, I was kind of running out of time. So I'll kind of spell out a little bit more about, um, you know, what, what officials we would go to. And I think we have language in like the short-term license about, um, you know, delegates the police chief as authority. So we delegate, you know, the building commissioner or the police chief and his designee. So we'll put that in there. Um, penalties for non-compliance. Um, I think we'll also want to stick something about, um, you know, non-criminal non-criminal enforcement, you know, fees and things like that, because uh, this, these regulations govern not just a license, but all operation of mobile food establishment in a public way. And if the punishment for operating without a license is to revoke your license, then that's not a very good deterrent, is it? Yeah. Um, and so this was. Um, Kind of, we had that kind of weird language from the original, um, the original regulation, the select board regulation, saying providing written notice um, to current lunch, lunch cart licensees. Um, oh right, I remember that. Yeah. And um, it's not really, you know, clear as to what form that would take. So, um, as with things being the mail and stuff, then we'd have to kind of um, think about things a lot more than just the 48 hours that we normally post things. So I figured just, um, I think, but I think it's good to notify the, the licensees. So I said annual licensees will be provided notice via electronic mail, at least 48 hours prior to any meeting at which the board votes to change the regulations. So it's kind of paralleling the, the, the uh, agenda posting and everything. Okay. We don't have to worry about the mail, so. Great. Well, that's wonderful, fantastic. Thank you. Well, thank um, you guys all for your, no, both your, uh, super. your hard work on it looks so good. getting to this point <laughs> and Marion yeah. for, uh, for drafting a, a great set for me to work off of. And um, yeah, all this feedback was really, really helpful. So yeah. It's nice okay. to take a deep dive. In yeah, <laughs> I know. Now all we need are the lunch carts. <laughs> making me hungry. I, I know, could deep dive right? into a falafel, that's for sure. <laughs> I know, I know, I was just thinking about that. Yeah. Okay, super. Um, so we'll look forward to more of this next time. And if you have any ideas, so Steve, you said you're meeting with uh, the parking people. And you yes, talked I'm to meeting. Su okay, great. And then you talked to Susan, right? About all that you ran this by her? I've, I've had a lot of conversations with Susan about this over the years. I kind of wanted okay. to get it into this shape before I did. So I'm going to try to okay. um, put all this, put all these things in because Susan's, um, she knows the food code like the back of her hand. Yeah, okay. Um, so I, I think the most valuable feedback we'd get for her is, you know, with something that's 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 um, you know, where where could this really conflict with that or or, or hold that up? So um, yeah, I will. I kind of have integrated a lot of things I've heard from her into this, and I'll kind of show her the uh, the specific draft um, after right. this. And I went over it with Rob too. So. Oh, fantastic. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I optimistically put voted by the Board of License Commissioners in September XX 2022. So um, that That's would be good. good. That would be great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, super. Okay. So should we go on to what are we license fee comparison? Guess um, yeah. So I actually, I think that we wanted to um, address this in our first September meeting. Yes. I have it on my calendar to work on this next week. So okay. All right. I, I, I've got it scheduled. All right, super, thank you. Um, okay, guidelines, regulations for liquor licenses and a draft went around from Helly. And... and this, I was behind on, this was just incorporated uh, Ryan, our council's comments into a new draft. Oh, it did, okay. 
I, I mean, the uh, document looks great, um, Hallie. I, you know, I, 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 I saw a minor one like typo, but I think the, the conceptual question I wanted to just kind of have us reflect on just to make sure I understand it right is that this kind of organizes in one place law that's coming from different places. And, and so I just wanted to be, um, do, we have, do we have the language we need to say that it's the other sources that are more, that are binding. So if like state law changes that that's gonna control not our guidelines and, and that, that kind of, lang that kind of uh, cautionary language is I guess the only thing I was wondering about. Uh, I mean, we can ask. Do you all do you do you see what I'm uh, do you do you see the point yeah. I'm trying to get at? Yeah. I, yeah. 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 I, I think I, that, you know one one place you can kind of crib some text for that. I think if you look at the town bylaws, the the set that was most recently adopted at the end of June, um, uh, there's a there's in the sort of introductory pages. There's some place in there where it says that you know any changes to you know any references to state law you know and changes to that law are inclusive and hold precedent or something like that. So there's some language there you can borrow, I think. The other thing that okay. uh, you see a lot in, in contracts sometimes too, and I think it works in regulation is the separability thing that says if any portion of these regulations are found to be, you know, uh, no longer valid or, or effective, the remainder stays in effect, you know, that kind of thing. So there's some standard separability language too that could be put in there. But I think I think I saw it in the in the, the town by law you know, it's a massive, like 170 page document, but I think it's literally the first four or five pages where it has some paragraph that, that has that kind of, um, you know, inclusive language of, you know, all applicable laws of the state and such and such. And that if they change, that supersedes any references to the, the statutes you might reference. Perfect. Can, can, I'm talking right now. Can you, I, can you take it downstairs? Thank you. Um, sorry. Um, perfect. I will go look for the bylaws and add okay. that. Uh, the only little typo, of, I mean, since you're just uh, on that, is um, in number 21, health instead of heath. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah, but it, I mean, this is, I think, a very helpful document for, yeah, very our, great. Um, for our applicants. Oh, you already have the severability section in there. I'm sorry. I knew I'd seen that someplace. It was already in your regulations. Yeah. No, I'll go through and just double check, and make sure. Um, I think that's uh, I think that's really fantastic, Hallie. Yeah, that's um, really good. I'm happy to kind of um, format it into uh, our our house style here, but um, I think that's really really okay. good. Yeah, that would be uh, wonderful. Okay. And um, the only suggestion I would make is um. Just well, this is fresh in your mind. Is maybe just for our internal use. Is just kind of, um, just make a note of like kind of like what Doug was saying. Just make a note of what comes from state law and what comes from like our own town policy, because that way, um, you know, in four or five years, when somebody's looking back at this, and the board might want to tweak something, um, they can see if it kind of traces back to to state law, or if it's just a local thing that could be changed easily. Okay. We'll do that. Okay, I'll hope, hopefully I'll get those changes and back to you guys by next meeting. Okay, great, fantastic, thank you. Um, oh, general letter to liquor licensees following state investigations. Okay, so this goes back to, as you know, the ABCC uh, hearing on the Hazel's Blue Lagoon and there was another one at uh, Watroba, Steve? Yes. Um, yes. And we talked about, and I'll let Steve talk to you about that in a second. We talked about like sending a general letter to everybody over the summer, the students are gone. And Steve and I were talking and thought maybe we could do one. Students are back. There have been maybe some ABCC hearings. Please keep this in mind. Here, are the, Here's the kind of card reader you should have, something along those lines. Yeah, so I actually have a uh, a topic not anticipated that um even came up after last time I spoke to you, Marion. Oh um, no way! So um I did get the results of the um Hazel's um hearing and uh, they issued an eight day suspension. Ooh, um, okay. To be served, I believe, Ooh. the first week of August or October. Sorry, October. Ooh. 
which is, um, Ouch. I mean, thinking back to our conversations with um, Porta and they were barely recommending like anything but a warning for the first offense. I thought that was quite severe, so. Yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah, may, Doug? You know, you're talking about sort of sending a letter. I think, yeah, the, the reminder, you know, I, I think the reminder that ABCC does enforcement on their own Right. Is something that may not have ever crossed anyone's mind. I mean, they, they you know, they certainly come before us and think about sort of lo local uh, enforcement of those things. But, but there is a, you know, just to remind them or make them aware of the state agency can just roll up on your doorstep and and, right. and enforcement. I think that's a useful piece of that of that letter. Um, and obviously, just a general reminder: it's like, hey, students are down. They're, you know, they're they're likely to be wanting to try to, you know, press their, you know. Uh, false IDs in front of you and, and mm -hmm. try to, you know, uh, get you to sell them, you know, inappropriately. Mm -hmm. And so that's an important message. And obviously, yeah, if we have recommendations about scanners and, and things like that, that's, that's useful. Okay, great. Thanks. That's really great. Any other suggestions for the letter? And hopefully we'll uh, have I, I was actually thinking that that suggestion might be good for the guidelines that Hallie's prepared. Oh, yeah. It, it might be a valuable reminder so, towards the top there that we're not the only enforcement body if it's not already. Yeah, that's a great point. Oh, and I realized I forgot to um, answer your question, Mary. And yeah, the um, what Trova's was, um, I think this happened right before we got word of the Hazel's violation and um, and uh, that's why I, I think it was right before we kind of I settled on sending sending everything along to the board but they had a, um, a underage service violation um, where and that's that's the one up on um, Sunderland Road um, right. where um, I guess um, I'll send you I'll send you along the report and the um, and the Hazel's um, investigative you know decision right after we're off this meeting but um uh, what the fact pattern was for Watrobas is that um, the investigators saw two young looking yeah. people walk outside with alcohol. Um, they identified themselves and asked to see their IDs and they, they showed him out of state fakes. Um, and so I guess at Watrobas, he did card them, um, oh. but, but didn't, he said he was on the phone with a, a, a local, a, like a, a shopkeeper around the corner or something. Cause there was a, a, a shoplifter or something going, going around and he was, focused on um on that problem and didn't didn't scan those two people even though he usually does and they happen to um be uh underage so um the abcc cited them and they did suspend his license for a day so okay two days maybe i'll send you along the report but oh that would be great thank um, you that's uh it's the interesting thing with um the way the law is written, if, if somebody gives you a Massachusetts ID, I mean, really, if it's any higher quality than drawn on crayon, even if it's fake, um, you have complete immunity from liability or passport. But if it's an out-of-state um, ID, you can't rely on it at all. Um, if somebody had a, a perfect uh, out-of-state ID and it turned out they were underage somehow, um, you'd still be liable. So even okay. if it's scanned, it's kind of crazy, but. All right. Okay, so we will, I will get a draft. Should I work on the draft of that, Steve, and shoot that over to you? That yeah. Yep. yeah that'd okay. Be. Okay. And then for distribution and suggestions. Great. Great. Um, okay, topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting. Is there anything else? Besides that, uh, Hazel's result, and I don't have anything else. Oh, yeah. Else. Wow. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So our next meeting is going to be September 1st, Thursday at 5, if that works for everybody. Okay. And, oh, are there any, are there any minutes? I didn't see any, right? Uh, well, I was going to, um, I had a bunch of time for license commission. I was going to get those together, but I spent all the time working on um, lunch cart. Well, on lunch great. cart, but I, I will have some, <laughs> I will have some time in the next couple of weeks. So I'm going to try to really catch up on uh, a bunch of things and um, kind of, yeah, get some, get some feedback and for you, Doug, and reformat that a little bit for you, Hallie, if you want to send that along, I'm just going to try to catch up on that, catch up on some minutes and uh, get up to speed before the students really kick in. Yeah, right. Okay, great. Thank okay. you. All right. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? Moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? 
I second. Thank you, Hallie. Um, we'll take a vote. Uh, Doug. Aye. Kelly. Aye. Gaston. Aye. And I, I four to zero, one absent. We're adjourned at six forty one p.m. Okay. So super meeting. Thanks everybody. Okay. See you next yeah. Time. Thank you all. Uh, as always, for your service. Steve. Your help was yeah. really helpful today. And um, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Take care. All right. All right. Thanks, Take Steve. Care. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.